two MiG-25 sprint to intercept a threat along the Soviet border during the Cold War. They are the quickest interceptors ever created, and they can achieve Mach 3.2 if they rarely push their engines. However, this is insufficient, because the thing they're hunting is capable of outrunning and outclimbing any threat, a plane designed to be impenetrable. Make sure to stay tuned until the end to find out more. Hey guys, welcome to another amazing video from Aviation News. Today in this video, we'll be talking about the SR-17 Blackbird and why it is said to be the fastest plane in the world. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to make sure you never miss any updates or videos from us. Now come, let's take a closer look. Throughout the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were embroiled in a fierce war for worldwide influence and domination. Both sides spend a lot of money on military technology. However, gaining the upper hand necessitates anticipating your opponent's next move. In the 1950s, there was also limited knowledge of facilities deep within the Soviet Union. The Americans were kept at bay by a vast network of radar stations, surface-to-air missile sites, and interceptor air bases, until 1956 when the Soviet Union was invaded by U-2 espionage planes. The U-2s had one crucial advantage. Despite being neither quick nor covert, they could fly above Soviet air defenses at 70,000 feet. Even Soviet radars couldn't detect the U-2 at such high altitudes, according to U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower. However, it turns out that the Americans were mistaken. The Soviets had been following the U-2 since its inception, and it was only a matter of time before they shot one down. It wasn't enough to just fly high. There were plans in the works to replace the U-2 before it began its surveillance missions. Because actual impunity over Soviet airspace would necessitate an amazing mix of speed, altitude, and stealth, this prompted the Americans to consider some outlandish spy plane proposals such as a ramjet-powered plane that could be launched from the belly of a supersonic B-58. However, the CIA selected Lockheed to develop the next generation of spy planes in 1959. The U-2 continued to fly over the Soviet Union in the meantime, but only for a short time as a Soviet surface-to-air missile finally brought one down in the spring of 1960. The debris and captured pilot were paraded around the Soviet Union as proof of Western hostility. As tensions escalated, the U.S. required a replacement for the U-2 more than ever, and the airplane produced by Lockheed would be unlike any other ever built. A plane that some 60 years after its debut is still the world's fastest air-breathing jet. The A-12 would be the name of Lockheed's top-secret surveillance plane. The A-12 was evolved into an interceptor prototype armed with air-to-air -air missiles, as well as a variant that could deploy an unmanned surveillance drone. It was originally employed by the CIA for reconnaissance. The SR-71 Blackbird, a variant constructed for the Air Force, would serve for decades, whereas earlier variants were rapidly discarded. The Blackbird could travel at Mach 3.2 near the verge of space for hours at a time. Lockheed's engineers had to invent almost everything from scratch to do this. The SR-71 and its predecessors were propelled by turbo ramjet engines that allowed them to reach such astounding speeds. They worked like traditional after-burning jet engines below Mach 2. Above that, they acted more like ramjets, with an inlet cone that could be modified to bypass air around the engine and straight into the afterburner. The exterior of the SR-71 would heat up to more than 500 degrees Fahrenheit at Mach 3.2 easily hot enough to soften aircraft aluminum. Titanium was utilized in 92% of Lockheed's aircraft, which necessitated the development of totally new manufacturing technology in the 1960s. Its odd design did more than simply pique the interest of UFO enthusiasts. It also helped lower its radar signal, as did the SR-71 Special Black Paint, earning it the nickname Blackbird. Over 800 surface-to-air missiles were fired at the A-12 and SR-71 when they were first deployed over North Korea and Vietnam. However, the spy plane never entered Soviet airspace, at least not on the record, because another shootdown over the Soviet Union would be disastrous. Instead, the SR-71 flew around its borders, peering hundreds of miles into Soviet territory with its powerful side-looking radar and cameras. The Soviets were irritated by this. Viktor Belenko defected to the West in 1976, leaving the Soviet Union in his MiG-25 fighter plane. He mentioned how frustrating it was to try to catch Blackbirds. The MiGs could go up to Mach 3 for a few minutes at a time. Not for as long as the Blackbird. They couldn't even climb to the tremendous altitude of the SR-71. Even the massive R-40 missiles lacked the guidance needed to hit the SR-71 square in the face. 
The blackbirds have been virtually untouchable for years. Any threat could be outpaced and outclimbed by them. By the 1980s, MiG-31s equipped with modern radar and long-range R-33 missiles were flying the skies. They, along with a new generation of Soviet surface-to-air missiles, posed a serious threat. But it wasn't an enemy missile or jet that posed the greatest threat to the Blackbird. It was the same thing. Although no Blackbird was ever lost on a mission, more than a third of the 50 aircraft were lost in crashes. One of the planes was destroyed completely around the pilots. They were also very expensive to run. Each one is siphoning $300 million from American defense budget every year. To keep these jets mission ready, a fleet of special aerial refuelers and a sizable army of support and maintenance personnel were required. The SR-71's capacity to deliver surveillance data in real-time was hampered by developments in spy satellites, aerial drones and the plane's inability to provide surveillance data in real-time. By the late 1980s, the SR-71's days were at number. They were decommissioned in 1998, with two of them being sent to NASA for testing. The A-12 and SR-71's technology is now well over 50 years old. Despite this, these beautiful planes continue to speak to us. It's not about the past, but rather about the future. It leaves us with a sense of awe beyond anything we've ever experienced in aviation. Furthermore, two Pratt & Whitney J-58 actual flow turbojet engines propelled the SR-71. The J-58 was a significant technological advancement at the time, capable of delivering a fixed thrust of 32,500 lbf or 145 kilonewton. The engine was most efficient around Mach 3.2, the Blackbird's average cruising speed. The afterburner supplied 26% of the thrust during takeoff. At roughly Mach 3, the afterburner generated all the push, which increased as the speed increased. The inlet spike and the following convergence stuck between both the center body and the inlet cowl compressed and heated the air at first. In relation to the engine, the shock waves reduced the air to subsonic speeds. The air was then sucked into the engine's compressor. Following the fourth compressor stage, 20% of the compressor flow was withdrawn and directed directly to the afterburner via six bypass tubes. The last five compressor stages compressed the air traveling through the turbojet even more, and fuel was then supplied to the combustion chamber. The exhaust, together with the compressor bleed air, reaches the afterburner after passing through the turbine. Because the turbine temperature limit remained constant at Mach 3, the temperature rise from intake compression, together with the temperature rise from the engine compressor, limited the permissible fuel flow. The rotating equipment produced less power, but enough to keep the airflow through the intake constant at 100 RPM. The rotating machinery became a drag item, and the afterburner temperature rise provided engine push at high speeds. The temperature of the air reaching the engine compressor, which was not authorized for temperatures beyond 800 degrees Fahrenheit, reduced the maximum flight speed. Originally, the J-58 engines of the Blackbird were started with the help of two Buick Wildcat V8 internal combustion engines installed externally on an AG-330 start cart. The start cart was positioned beneath the J-58 and the two Buick engines spun a single vertical drive shaft connected to the J-58 engine to over 3,200 RPM, at which time the turbojet could self-sustain. The cart was shifted after the first J-58 engine was started to start the aircraft's other J-58 engine. Later, starter carts had Chevrolet Big Block V8 engines, which were also used in later starter carts. Quieter pneumatic start method was eventually created for usage at principal operating bases. The V8 starter carts were left at diversion landing sites that did not have a pneumatic system. There was speculation about a replacement for the SR-71, including a purported Aurora-class aircraft. Reconnaissance satellites are slower to respond to demand than reconnaissance planes because they require up to 24 hours to arrive in the right orbit to photograph a specific target. Spy satellites fly over orbits can also be predicted, allowing assets to be hidden as the satellite passes, a disadvantage not shared by aircraft. As a result, there is skepticism that the United States has abandoned the concept of spy planes as a complement to surveillance satellites. Unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, are also utilized for aerial reconnaissance in the 21st century, as they can fly over hostile areas without endangering human pilots and are smaller and less detectable than manned aircraft. On November 1, 2013, media reports stated that Skunk Works was developing the SR-72, an unmanned reconnaissance plane that would fly twice as fast as the SR-71 and Mach 6. The U.S. Air Force, on the other hand, is seeking the Northrop Grumman RQ-180 UAV to take over the SR-71 strategic ISR function. T-1 
Do you believe we should have more planes like SR-17 Blackbird in the aviation industry? Let us know in the comment section. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, share and subscribe to our channel Aviation News for more such exciting aviation content. See you in the next video.